Hi guys, I'm Danny, and I started a Sunday gym because I've noticed lately that people tend to go to colleges and universities without actually knowing why they're there. And afterwards, starting jobs are unfulfilling, so I'm interviewing different professionals to see what they have to say and share their knowledge and experience with you. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> right on, Dan. How you doing, man? Thank you for joining. How's it going? Yeah, we finally made it happen. I, I know it took a couple attempts, but I uh, finally happened. It did, yeah, and I'm happy. It so, what? Uh, it, it did indeed, and I'm pretty happy to have you on. You're gonna have a, <laughs> you, you have a lot to say. The well, problem, it's late there, right? It's early here, but it's late there. It's uh, seven p.m. <laughs> yeah, uh, like on Clockworks. Right. Well, so, here, here is noon, but um, <clears throat> that actually to me is early because I work late. Like I'll, I'll be in the shop tattooing until like eleven thirty at night sometimes. Nice. Uh, normally, I, I go to bed around nine thirty, at, at best ten ten p.m. Way earlier than me. Yeah. Yeah. And with that said, the program will be focused on three main questions: What do you do for a living? How'd you get there? And how did you know this was the way to go? So that's what you do for a living, Dan. Well, right now I own a tattoo shop and a tattoo. Um, I, I do I do make some money off like I write books so I make money off that I do illustrations um I just got a like a job doing um a bunch of illustrations for a horror video game so like I, I need to draw them twenty five illustrations as well is it twenty to twenty five but anyways so so I do that so, but like my main source of income is tattooing nice so and and basically it's like because I know very little about tattooing I never had any. But it's like drawing, right? They're like drawing, but on a skin. It is, well, in some ways the same, some ways different. Um, I, I like it in that, you know, I do art for a living, you know, but, you know, I went to art school and I originally moved to New York City to be a comic artist. And, you know, I, I, nice. I, and I remember um, when I was like 19 or 20, a, a friend, a friend of a friend of mine, um, like her name was Sonia, and she was dating a guy who was like a tattoo artist in Virginia Beach. And he's like, he offered to apprentice me, but at the time I thought tattoos were just like those little like old school designs, you know. So I just see a lot of artistry in it. So I was like, yeah, thank you very much. And I turned him down. And then I moved to New York City, and like I, I'm working restaurant jobs, and I'm like interviewing with like I interviewed with DC Comics, and with Penguin Books, and interviewed with Marvel Comics, and interviewed with Image Comics. All the comics were doing very badly at the time, and, and I remember I interviewed with uh, Andrew Helper mm -hmm. from uh, from DC Comics, and like he had the the Vertigo line, which is like Swamp Thing and Constantine, like all the more adult oriented stuff. So I thought, yeah, th I'm on my way. You know, th this is this is who I need to talk to. But he he got fired two weeks after he interviewed me. He was like very down. I remember he pulled out a comic and like, Superman punching Luther. And he goes, you want to do this? I go, no. He goes, eh, we don't have a job for you. <laughs> I'm, a huge, like, I'm a huge comic book fan uh, and, and like nerd in general. I remember that one time because I'm also a little bit odd. And, you know, I, I don't know if you saw that movie. It's an old movie now with Henry Cavill, Man of Steel. Have you ever seen that one? Oh, of course. Yeah. Right. I hated I, it. It was so stupid. Hate it? I hate what? it. I thought he was the best Superman. No, no, it wasn't. Christopher Reeves was my best. Although, yeah. you know, to be fair, okay, I love Henry Cavill. All right, I, I do. I do. Uh, <laughs> the movie was stupid. I'm not saying the actor wasn't. So the movie was dumb. I what, hated what, it so much. What did much. you not like about the movie? Can I say again? What did you not like about the movie? It it didn't felt right. That's right. what. Yeah. I. I it, it just didn't felt right. You, have you seen the Christopher Reeves movies? Superman? Of course, Christopher? yeah, yeah. Those felt right. Have See, you seen it? It was a goofy TV series. Lois and Clark and Smallville. Those were different TV series. I don't know if you've seen them. I didn't watch them. I, I knew what you were talking about, but I didn't watch them. They yeah. felt right. That whole other thing, it did And I didn't like it so much. I wrote 97 pages of master thesis <laughs> of lack of innovation in DC Comics and the financial impact that this will have afterwards. I yeah. wrote that 10 years ago and it's still valid. That's how much I didn't like the movie. 
All right, let, let me make a case real quick because I thought I thought it was a great film. I mean, I think Henry Cavill is an awesome period. Like The Witcher, yes. he's great in The Witcher. You know, but I've the, never seen that. I've never saw that. You've never seen The Witcher? No. You need to go watch The Witcher. Witcher is awesome. Uh, I know it's a game, but I've never played the game, so that's why I never saw the movie. Well, it's also a book series. It's like I, I think it's a Polish author and uh. Think like Game of Thrones, but with even like more magical creatures and stuff. I so it, it's really good. I really like it. Um, well, what I thought with uh, Man of Steel, like, so originally Superman, like, he's this weird, like, alien guy that gets like put on the earth and then he ends up doing good stuff. Yeah. And it seemed to be like he kind of captured that vibe where Christopher Wee was like the. Yeah, I'm the all American jock. I'm the football star. You know, you know, I'll, I'll just throw it around. It, like it, it to me, I, I like the Henry Cavill vibe because, like, this. Well, yeah, that, that weird was a guy key. trying to adapt to what's going on. Yeah, I, I can, I, I can agree. With, especially, I don't know if you remember that scene when he was at a bar and somebody poured beer on his head, and then he uh, just literally destroyed a man's truck. Like he, he left him without livelihood. Right, because that was rather childish, but he, he, if you really see it from another, but he was also he was young. Yeah, he was growing. Yeah, so yeah, and that's why I really love the, the Christopher Reeve thing because he's already grown. All right, this is the right. perfect, the perfect example. Already in perfection, so there, there there isn't growth there. Everything else is just there. So. I guess I loved it more because first it was way more colorful and second it, it was already the developed product. I don't, I honestly, I love Wolverine. I really didn't have to know that his clothes were made of bones and, and that they had to be covered with aluminium or whatever you want to call it. I, uh, no, mm -hmm. I don't, know. I, I don't want to know about that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, or adamantium, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, I'm playing around. <laughs> but the thing is, um, you know, like the there's a bunch of different takes on like Wolverine. Like uh um, have the comic. Yeah, yeah. Um so that that the Weapon X series um what was uh Barry Winston Smith, he was an awesome artist and mm -hmm. he did that, but he wrote that and he did that, and I thought that was a great backstory. And then when they try to make seven movies, they make it like cheesy and you know, yeah. Well, and, I love you know, the backstory. When it was written, I don't know if you saw it uh, in the X Men in the nineties, the the animated series. I don't know. Well, I'm not real big on the animated series, so I remember the animated series, but I didn't yeah. watch it regularly. It was it was pretty good backstory, and back to because I you kind of covered the the second question a little bit, but I want to know a little bit more because you know the second question is uh, how did you get there? Now uh, you said that a friend of yours. Uh, told you about the tattoos, you turn them down, and, and then you started with the comics and everything. So well, how did there, you, there, because I mean, in all fairness, what you were doing is quite specific, all right? You Obviously, you have the skills, you have the skills in your hands, you have the skills in your mind, otherwise you can't visualize it, and correct me when I'm wrong, of course, this is just what I'm saying, but you could have been doing a lot of things, but you ended up doing that. So... Well, I, I remember, like, like I always wanted to be a comic artist. Like, comic artist was my big thing. Um, and I remember I lived in Gainesville, Florida, which is kind of like a trashy, like a white trash, oppressed town. But they had a university there, and so they had a comic store. This is back when comic stores weren't a big thing. Like, most people just bought comics at, like, you know, 7-Eleven. Um, but they had, like, comic stores, and I was, like, a little kid, but I was trying my best to, like, make my own um, comic pages I remember there were a bunch of indie artists that worked at like these shops and they give me tips and they give me advice and they give me feedback so uh, like I, I was really <clears throat> set on that and I remember I read um, Watchmen by, by Alan Moore yeah. and I was like you know I was like you know I couldn't decide whether I wanted to draw or write but I was like I can do both this would be great you know so then I remember I was in D.C. I, I was like, submitted all these people. Um, I submitted to Caliber Press. They picked me up, um, but they were bankrupt. I submitted to um, Kitchen Sink. They picked me up, but they went bankrupt. No. Uh, I submitted to, to Paradox Press. Um, they picked me up, but they went bankrupt. 
and then I remember I submitted an image. They didn't pick me up, but they also wanted you just to draw their stuff. And I was like, no, I want to tell my stories, you know. So then, then, and I did like political cartoons. I did cover for Maximum Rock and Roll, you know. And so I was, I was like getting my art out there, but I wasn't breaking the comics. So I was like, you know, I need to take the next step. So I put myself through art school, you know, like um, I, I went to community college. You get around on like this 10 year old motorcycle. It's like, it's really hard to balance our materials on a 10 year old motorcycle. <laughs> but so, and, and then I remember my, my art teacher said, if you want to create an art, you got to move to New York City. So I moved to New York City. Like, you know, it, it was like basically middle of the night, like everything I owned in a backpack on a motorcycle, I just moved to New York City. And uh, but when I was in New York City, uh, you know, I was going to all these galleries. I was, you know, doing all these interviews. Uh, like I was pulling every trigger I possibly could, you know, but I just, I wasn't getting an art job. So in the meantime, I ended up waiting tables and I hated that. Yeah, um, and, and so I, I'm stuck waiting tables, and then like a year passes, and I'm still stuck waiting tables. You know, and, and I How remember I, when the when, when the weather thing is going on. When I moved to New York City, how old was I? Yeah. Let's see, that was '98, so and I was born in '72, so it's what '27. Oh yeah, so fairly yeah. young. You know, yeah, yeah, young. and uh, well. I, I would have like I would I I felt like it was old because <laughs> I was like you're supposed to get started at 21 but yeah. you know but you know or even early 18 but like you turned 18 my parents kicked me out of the house and they moved like as they like, were supposed I, to yeah, yeah yeah like I I spent like uh I I spent eight months like living in the woods like rocking the pillow you know <laughs> because you know I was just trying to get on my feet. You know, and then I, I got this horrible job at Chuck E. Cheese, which is, you know, very, very bad. I don't recommend to anyone. You know, and then and then I slowly, you know, worked my way up. Um, and then, you know, I was trying to make it as an artist the whole time, like painting everyone's leather jackets and like doing, you know, silver bins and flyers for clubs and stuff. You know, and, and but finally I put myself through art school. Like you know, I went to like illustrators meetings and they were all down on like comic book hills or um, political illustration and stuff. So then I moved to New York City to make it. And then while I was in New York City, um, I remember a friend of my brother's named Chad Dibble was a tattoo artist in PA. And he saw my stuff. He's like, that guy needs a tattoo. You know, and by this point, I'd seen like more like realistic tattoos, like, like, uh, you know, the, the kind of stuff that Guy actually was doing or Aaron Kane, you know, like stuff that didn't look like those little old school symbols. And I was like, you know, and I was thinking, well, okay, I'll do this until I get a quote real job, you know, but then, then I started doing it. First of all, it's a lot more difficult than you think. Like there, there's a lot of technical stuff. So you, yeah, you can you imagine. Know? I mean, this is, this is like flash and not, it can be yeah, infected. Yeah. It can be a lot of things. Well, and there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Like, yeah, well, it's great on a piece of paper. Doesn't look great on skin. You know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You have to know the difference. So, like, you have to flow with muscles. You have to consider aging. You have to consider it might be covered in hair. It might be covered in a suntan. So, you have to take all this stuff into consideration. And a lot of people, they handle it differently. You know, so... There, there are all these like little minor technical aspects that you have to learn as you go along. So I, I remember going into it, you know, and like one, I was thinking like I'm can just you learn, out of pure curiosity. Can you learn all of this from reading, or you have to have some practice? I think it really helps. I mean, technically, you could learn it from reading or like YouTube, you know, videos or whatever. But I think it really, really helps to have like a mentor that helps you. You know that like gives you advice and you know can critique you. Um, it, it's kind of like I mean it's like with a lot of things, but you know this is even more technical because there's stuff you you kind of you don't know what the tattoo is going to look like in five years if you you know, are brand new and you just start out. But your mentor is going to know, so he, he can tell you. Well, you know that's the correct approach. Or this is the incorrect approach. This is why. You know, and he can guide you along, and you're not going to get that for reading. Like, you don't get any feedback. You just get, like, you know, brash, 
facts like throw in your face. Well, as far as I know, and uh, again, I, I know very little of the subject, but as far as I know, normally people don't do tattoos on children, right? So, so they wait until they're grown so they don't have to grow again. But I, I'm not sure about that. That's what I heard. Right, well, well, the way it works is like, I've been in New York City. In New York City, the law is 18. So you have to be at least 18 and provide proof of identity and age in order to get tattooed. Um, but there are places like, I think Florida has the lowest standard. Um, you can be 14 and get tattooed in, in Florida, but you need to have a parent. I'm an old fashioned man. I consider a 14 year old a child. I don't care yeah. how tall well, you are or how. I, tall. I, I remember people would come in and they like, if you're underage, you have to have a photo ID and a birth certificate. Like, often they have a driver's license, but they have like a school ID and birth certificate and you know the parent would come in because the parent also has to have id but i wouldn't do it you know because yeah. i'm like you know i like you don't even fully develop your brain until you're like 26 so I'm like 30, no, i don't even i don't have a fully developed <laughs> brain yet <laughs> but i'm I like look smart in front of camera because i'm asking the trick questions i've been asking for a while but you you and i we go on a bar we have a couple of drinks you will see i'm not a very smart person <laughs> Well, I, it's I what think, it is. I'm just being yeah. honest. <laughs> well, it, you know, if I was um, if I had money at 18, I'd have the worst tattoo period. I didn't have money until I was 21 to get a tattoo, so that helped me out. But what I would get now is even more than I get when I was 21. So imagine at 14, like you'd be covered in like crappy band logos for me you don't like anymore. Yeah. And I'm happy that we <coughs> had the topic of the of the young ones because actually that's one of the many reasons I started this program. I'm sure that you've noticed this in the US because it's happening in Europe a lot. A lot. People tend to go to colleges and you now you obviously you're not that the in that group because you went to, to, to school because you knew that you were into art. But a lot of people tend to go to colleges and universities because they have that stigma, right? Go over there to get a diploma to secure your future, which hasn't been the case for a long time. That that that's not not a guarantee anymore. I've known personally. I've known, I'm sure you know this as well. A lot of people that didn't go to to college to pursue higher education, they're doing well in life. I personally know a lot of people with master's degrees and PhDs. They're not worth two cents. So that's definitely just a stigma. And what I hate about it is because you know you, you go over there, you lose between four and six years. And then you go out, you know, puffed with uh, self-esteem that, that doesn't have any coverage. And you believe that the world owes you something. It doesn't. Yet, you know, you've lost all that time. So what we have now, we have 25, 25 26-year-old young adults. Those aren't children anymore. Young adults without any practical skills, without any, well, not any, with, with limited knowledge and not very aware of how the world actually works. And this is a troublesome situation and it's not really about the money i heard stories i'm not certain of course but i heard stories that sometimes in the u.s the education can be a little bit overpriced in europe that's not really the case i mean i'm about to start a phd and it will be about 500 or 520 us dollars per year so yeah, well, you, that's cheap i i pay more than that for our school i know um, you can't even buy cigarettes for, for a year for that that amount of money so yeah, it's not about the money; it's about the time. And I, I, I'm a little bit worried about the thing that you know that this is an issue. Young people losing their time that's not being addressed. So, well, I, I think. What do you think about that? Yeah, I was going to put my opinion there. So w what I think about that is like you know, if you look like back in the day, like I'm old, I'm fifty, you know, but um, you know, I I remember um like uh. You know, like H.R. Geiger, he's from Europe. He's a pretty famous artist. He's designed to the movie Alien. The people aren't, you know, familiar with him. But um, he wanted to go to art school. And it was like, I don't remember who went, like the 60s or something. But I remember, you know, back then people were concerned about, you know, go if you go to college, it's because you want to learn a skill that you need to learn in college that will make you money. So I remember, you know, he wanted to go to school for art. And his dad said, well, I'm not sure that you're going to make money as an artist. So why don't you get an architecture degree? So I don't know if you've seen his art, but his, 
you know, when he does landscapes and buildings, they're amazing. So, that makes sense. That makes a lot of so, sense. Yeah. So he he totally he totally knows what he's doing <laughs> with architecture. So <clears throat> the thing is, like, people used to be very concerned about going to college and learning a skill that they could then make a career off of. Practical now, skills. Now, right. Yeah. Practical. Right. Now it, it's usually more like, oh, well, I'll go to college and then I'll get me a job. Well, no, that's mm -hmm. not a no. given. Yeah. And, and you know, like, I'm a big fan of, like, trade schools, for instance. Yeah. You know, so, like, you have people that are, like, plumbers or electricians. They are blowing away the people that have, like, a hundred thousand dollars worth of college debt, but they're working in Tar Center. <laughs> you know, wait, wait, a hundred and thousand dollars. He paid a hundred thousand dollars for a diploma for the education. Yeah, well, my brother did. Yeah, a hundred thousand. Yep. Why would you? You can buy a garage in downtown for that amount of money. You have well, the money back. That's what, that's what. Yeah, but the thing is, like a hundred thousand. That's a lot. I think, I mean, it's it's a swindle, but it's like the government has convinced you this is what you need to do. Like They're like, oh, well, if you want to make it in real life, you have to go to college. You have to go to college. So the, the you know, it's gotten away from the, like, learn a skill that will do something to the, just go to college. You go to college, it'll all be good. And the people are getting, like, these this crazy like degrees and, like, stuff they'll never get. And the thing is, because the government is so for it, like they're putting out all these loans and making loans like really easily available. So the colleges know, hey, all these people have all this money. How are we going to attract them? So what they, they start doing is like, if you look at like a lot of the colleges here in the U.S., they'll, they'll, they offer like uh, free gyms, free rock climbing walls, free pools, free, like all this extraneous stuff. And they're like, how well, is this attractive? If you can go to the mountain, the mountain is free to climb at least here. I, I, I know, but the thing is, like, you know, you should go to our school because we offer all this stuff. And the student is going, well, I have all this money from the government. And then the school goes, oh, well, they have free government money. We'll up the price. You know, so you end up like it's like the whole thing is bad, just keeps getting worse. There are about 10 or 20 <laughs> universities that are like that, that insanely expensive, $100,000, that, that's crazy expensive. But if a normal university puts that fee, they will have to pay 100000 for protection from the students because they'll mm -hmm. skin them alive if you mm -hmm. actually ask that kind of money here. You you have to go, I don't know, South Pole or something, because most people here don't like the code, so we're not gonna follow over there. That's insane, man. I don't know, that's, well, that's I, I I actually think like like I tend to be like more libertarian than anything. Like I'm just like, you know, <laughs> like as little government as humanly possible. But one thing I do think is I do think that you know we should have free education, but I think we should have free education for people that show ability in something. So, exactly. you know, so if, if you like are really good at working in cars, we'll send you to trade school for free. You know, yeah. if you're really good at designing buildings, we'll send you to architecture college. Well, that's like, actually, that's what's going show on. Me, here, show like... me that you're good. And yeah. then, and then we'll pay you. Like if you're just like, Hey, I don't know. I need a college degree. All right. You know, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with them. Uh, they're called Lufthansa. The, the airplane. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that's what they're doing. If you want to work for them as a technician, you sign two contracts. One for six months. When you're a trainee, you learn what to do. Then you sign another one after those six months, and you're approved. You sign for two years. You're getting a job there. You're getting paid, but you can't leave. Uh, and it's pretty good, right? They're giving you the trade right there. Not only they're giving you the trade, they're paying oh, good, you. Yeah. yeah. And as for the for the free education, I actually got that one. Uh, my master's degree is from Denmark. Uh, when I went there, uh, so my bachelor's from the Danish college here, but my master's degree is from Oboke University in Denmark. It was free, but the taxes were crazy. Like half of my salary was for taxes. And I didn't really didn't like this. That's why I come back here to, uh, I come, I'm originally from Bulgaria, Southern Europe. And taxes here are like severely low, so I like that. And I don't really feel comfortable giving half my payment to the government. I don't yeah. feel comfortable giving them one fifth either, but it's better than half. 
Well, I, I think the government ruins everything. I don't think it's going to give the government that much control over anything. It's like, you know, I don't like to... I don't like people to tell me what to do, and I don't like to tell people what to do. Exactly. Like, just I, as long as long as you know, you know, you're cool. I'm cool. All right, that's it. I had a remarkable gentleman. I'm. Go- I asked him the same question. I'm going to ask you next. All right. Okay. I asked him if you can give one advice to the audience. What will it be? I'll ask you the same question in a moment. But his answer was, "Well, look, you, look at you in the mirror and ask you who's going to hold me accountable." I, why would you do that? You absolutely lost everybody here who's working for the government. They don't even know what that word means. They'll think you're an alien. They're going to search now for your spaceship. Why would you do something to those poor people? He started laughing because I don't care where you're from. The government's stupid everywhere. That's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. no, it's true. Yeah. And with that said, if you can give one advice, <laughs> just don't use the word uncomfortable. We already messed up the audience. Uh, accountable. <laughs> just, just if you get to have one uh, advice, will it be then? I think if you really want to do something, like I really want to do art. If you really want to do something, pursue it. Don't go like, oh well, I don't know. There are all these detractors. There are always detractors. You know, you know, just if you want to do something, find a way. Like, don't go. Oh, maybe my parents will support me. Oh, maybe the government will support me. Like, no. The only one that cares in the end when we all die is you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, like, if, if you really want something, do it for yourself. And, you know, you find a way to make it work. Like, like I I didn't immediately I would go, I want to draw a comic and boom, I'm a comic artist. No, you know, I worked tons of jobs. I put myself through art school. I was homeless. You know, I had brain cancer. Yeah, your room looks like a museum, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, but my wife died in run, like all this stuff. There, but I was like, those are speed bumps because this is what I wanted to do in life. It's not like, oh, I'm ruined. I quit. Yeah. You know? So that that was long winded, but that's my advice. Don't give up. It's a pretty good vibe. I remember I had an interview with her. She was a tremendous young lady, very, very smart, very sharp young woman. And she wanted to quit university. It wasn't for her. She already found a few courses. Uh, She took them and now she's happy. She has a good career. But she was afraid because her mom told her that she won't talk to her anymore. I said, that's a plus. You don't... don't You're a a grown woman. Now you're a 24-year-old woman. You know women mature faster than us, right? So at 24, that's a woman right there. You don't need your mama no more. What? Well, my uh, my late wife was uh, Colombian. And, you know, in Colombian culture, like, especially where she's from, because her dad was, like, military and lived in, like, isolated army bases. So, you know, she was, like, a lot more mature and fully grown, you know, even when I met her, and she was like 21 when I met her, then most people are when they're like 30. Yeah. It's how it is. And with that said, Dan, huge thanks for being with me. Please don't forget to send me everything, like books, drawings, everything. I want to put them in the description below, and I want a lot of people to see this, all right? Be awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. We finally made this happen. <laughs> I know, and we should do it again. <laughs> all right. Bye. I'm down. Bye. Guys, I hope this one was useful. Please follow the channel on YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Gap, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Ring the bell and all the good stuff. Have a nice week ahead, and I'll see you next Sunday.